My name is Tasha, and five years ago, I married Tom, thinking we shared the same dreams and ambitions. We moved into my luxury apartment on the top floor of a high-rise building, with a view that took my breath away every time I looked out the window. I worked as the head of the financial department in a trading company, and my career was on a steep upward trajectory. Tom's mother, Linda, lived nearby and visited us often. From the beginning, she made it clear that she didn't approve of my career-oriented lifestyle. A woman's place is in the home, she'd say, her lips pursed in disapproval. You should be taking care of your husband, not gallivanting off to work every day. I tried to keep the peace, smiling and nodding when Linda went on her tirades about the duties of a good wife. But inside, I was seething. I had made it clear to Tom from the start that I wanted to build my career before settling down to have children. He had agreed then, but as time went on, I could see him wavering under his mother's influence. One evening, after a particularly long day at work, I came home to find Tom and Linda sitting at our dining table, heads close together in conversation. They fell silent as soon as I walked in, and I felt a chill run down my spine. Tasha, Tom said, his voice tight. We need to talk. I dropped my bag and sat down, my heart pounding. What's wrong? Linda spoke up first. Tasha, dear, we're worried about you. All this work, it's not healthy. You're neglecting your home, your husband. When are you going to start thinking about having children? I took a deep breath, trying to keep my temper in check. Linda, Tom and I have discussed this. We agreed that we'd focus on our careers first, then think about starting a family. Tom shifted uncomfortably in his seat. Tasha, maybe it's time to reconsider. We're not getting any younger, and mom's right. The apartment's a mess, and I'm tired of eating takeout every night. I couldn't believe what I was hearing. Tom, are you serious? We talked about this. You know how important my job is to me. More important than your family? Linda interjected, her voice sharp. I stood up, my chair scraping loudly against the floor. My job is how I'm building a future for our family. I thought you understood that, Tom. I stormed out of the room, locking myself in our bedroom. As I lay on the bed, staring at the ceiling, I couldn't shake the feeling that this was just the beginning of my troubles. Little did I know how right I was. The next morning, I left for work before Tom woke up. As I rode the elevator down to the lobby, I made a promise to myself. I wouldn't let anyone, not even my husband, derail my ambitions. I had worked too hard to get where I was, and I wasn't about to give it all up now. I arrived at the office earlier than usual and stayed late into the night, determined to prove my worth. My dedication didn't go unnoticed. A few hours later, my secretary buzzed me. Mrs. Thompson, the president would like to see you in his office. My heart raced as I made my way to the top floor. Mr. Johnson, our company president, was known for his shrewd business acumen and his tendency to spring surprises on his employees. Tasha, come in, he said as I knocked on his door. Have a seat. I perched on the edge of the leather chair across from his desk, my hands clasped tightly in my lap. I've been watching your work closely, Mr. Johnson began, his face unreadable. And I must say, I'm impressed. I let out a breath I didn't realize I'd been holding. Thank you, sir. He leaned forward, his eyes intense. We're expanding, Tasha. Merging with a large company from another city. It's a big move, and we need our best people on it. My pulse quickened. Was this going where I thought it was? I'm planning to promote you, he continued. Head of a new department. But I won't lie to you, Tasha. It's going to be tough. You'll have to work harder than you've ever worked before. Are you up for it? I thought about Tom and Linda, about their expectations of me. Then I thought about all the late nights I'd spent poring over financial reports, the satisfaction I felt when a project came together perfectly. Absolutely, sir, I said firmly. And I accept. I won't let you down. As I left Mr. Johnson's office, I felt like I was walking on air. This was what I'd been working towards all these years. 
I couldn't wait to share the news with Tom. Surely, when he saw how successful I was becoming, he'd understand why my career was so important to me. On my way home, I stopped at our favorite restaurant and ordered all of Tom's favorite dishes. I picked up a bottle of champagne and a bouquet of roses. This was cause for celebration, and I was determined to make it special. I juggled the bags as I unlocked our apartment door. Tom? I called out. I'm home. And I've got a surprise. I found him in the living room, sprawled on the couch, the TV blaring. He barely looked up as I entered. Tom, you won't believe what happened today, I said, my excitement bubbling over. I'm getting promoted. Head of a new department. Isn't that amazing? Tom muted the TV and turned to face me, his expression far from the joy I'd expected. So, you'll be working even more now, is that it? I felt my smile falter. Well, yes, but think about what this means for us. We'll be able to afford that big house we've always talked about. Regular trips around the world. Our future is set. Tom stood up abruptly. Our future? What future, Tasha? You're never home as it is. When was the last time we had dinner together? When was the last time we even had a real conversation? I gestured helplessly at the bags I'd brought home. That's why I brought dinner. I thought we could celebrate. Celebrate what? Tom's voice rose. Celebrate you abandoning our marriage for your job? Celebrate the fact that I married a woman who cares more about her career than having a family? I felt tears pricking at my eyes. I thought you'd be happy for me, I whispered. Tom's face softened for a moment, then hardened again. I can't do this anymore, Tasha. Something has to change. With that, he stormed off to his office, slamming the door behind him. I stood in the middle of our living room, surrounded by the trappings of the celebration that would never happen, feeling more alone than I ever had in my life. As I mechanically put away the food and poured myself a glass of champagne, I couldn't help but wonder, was this the price of success? And if it was, was I willing to pay it? One evening, as I was leaving the office, I had an idea. I'd hire a housekeeper. Someone to clean the apartment and cook meals. It would solve Tom's complaints about the messy apartment and lack of home-cooked food. Satisfied with my solution, I made the necessary arrangements. Two weeks later, I came home to find the apartment spotless, the air filled with the aroma of a home-cooked meal. I smiled to myself, certain that Tom would be pleased. I heard the front door open and close. Tom? I called out. I'm home. And dinner's ready. He walked into the kitchen, his eyes darting around the clean space. What's all this? I hired a housekeeper, I explained, unable to keep the pride out of my voice. She cleans and cooks. I thought it would make things easier for both of us. Instead of the gratitude I expected, Tom's face clouded over. So, this is your solution? Hire someone else to do your job? That's not fair, I protested. I'm trying to find a balance. Balance? Tom laughed bitterly. Is that what you call this? Tell me, Tasha, now that you've found a replacement for yourself in the kitchen, are you going to find a replacement for yourself in our bed too? I recoiled as if he'd slapped me. How dare you, I hissed. I've done nothing but try to make our life better, and this is how you react. Tom turned away. I'm going out. Don't wait up. The door slammed behind him, leaving me alone in the immaculate kitchen, the untouched dinner growing cold on the table. Over the next few days, Tom and I barely spoke. I buried myself in work, focusing on the upcoming merger. It was easier to deal with spreadsheets and financial projections than the mess my personal life had become. Then, one rare Saturday when I didn't have to go into the office, I decided to make an effort. I spent the morning cooking Tom's favorite meals, set the table with our best china, and even put on the dress he'd bought me for our last anniversary. When Tom came home, I was waiting with a smile. I thought we could have a nice dinner together, I said, trying to keep my voice light. Just the two of us. Tom looked at me for a long moment, then nodded silently. My heart leapt. 
Maybe this was the turning point we needed. I was just about to serve the appetizer when the doorbell rang. Confused, I went to answer it. There, standing in the hallway, was Linda. Linda, I said, unable to keep the surprise out of my voice. We weren't expecting you. Oh, I was in the neighborhood and thought I'd drop by, she said, pushing past me into the apartment. Tom, darling, there you are. I watched in dismay as my carefully planned romantic dinner turned into an impromptu family gathering. Linda dominated the conversation, peppering her small talk with not-so-subtle digs at my housekeeping and lack of maternal instincts. You know, she said, helping herself to more wine. In my day, a woman knew her place was in the home. We took pride in taking care of our husbands, raising our children. I stood up abruptly. I think it's time for dessert, I said, fleeing to the kitchen. As I leaned against the counter, trying to regain my composure, I could hear Linda's voice drifting in from the dining room. Tom, darling, you need to talk some sense into her. A woman's duty is to her family first. Everything else is secondary. I closed my eyes, fighting back tears. This wasn't how I had imagined my life would be. I had a successful career, a beautiful home, but at what cost? As I listened to Linda's continued lecture on the virtues of traditional family values, I couldn't help but wonder if I had made a terrible mistake somewhere along the way. One evening, I came home later than usual, my mind still buzzing with the day's meetings. As I opened the door to our apartment, I froze. There, scattered across the living room floor, were baby clothes. Tiny onesies, miniature socks, even a small pair of shoes. Tom? I called out, my voice wavering. What's all this? He emerged from the bedroom, a strange look on his face. Oh, mom brought those over. She thought it might help you get in the mood. I picked up a small t-shirt, my fingers trembling. In the mood for what, exactly? For starting a family, of course, Tom said, as if it were the most obvious thing in the world. Tasha, we're not getting any younger. It's time we seriously considered having children. I spent the rest of the evening silently putting away the baby clothes, my mind in turmoil. Was I being selfish? Was my ambition destroying my marriage? The next morning, I woke up to find more baby items strategically placed around the apartment. A rattle on the coffee table, a baby book on my nightstand, a high chair in the kitchen. Linda's handiwork, no doubt. I tried to ignore them, but they seemed to multiply. Every day, there was something new. It was as if the apartment was slowly transforming into a nursery, whether I wanted it to or not. One night, I came home to find Linda sitting on our couch, flipping through a parenting magazine. Linda, I said, unable to keep the irritation out of my voice. I didn't know you were coming over. She looked up, a saccharine smile on her face. Oh, Tasha, dear. I hope you don't mind. Tom said I could wait for him here. He's just popped out to get some groceries. I nodded stiffly, heading to the bedroom to change. When I came back out, Linda was standing by the window, looking out at the city skyline. You know, Tasha, she said, not turning around. A view like this is wasted on just two people. Imagine how lovely it would be to have a child toddle up to this window, their little hands pressed against the glass, eyes wide with wonder. I felt a headache coming on. Linda, I appreciate your concern, but Tom and I will decide when we're ready for children. She turned to face me, her eyes hard. And when will that be, Tasha? When you've worked yourself into an early grave? When it's too late. I opened my mouth to argue, but at that moment, Tom walked in, arms full of grocery bags. He looked between us, sensing the tension. Everything okay here? He asked cautiously. Linda's demeanor changed instantly. Oh, everything's fine, darling. I was just having a little chat with Tasha about family planning. Tom's eyes lit up. Really? That's great. I knew you'd come around, Tasha. I felt cornered, outnumbered. I, I need some air, I mumbled, grabbing my coat and rushing out of the apartment. A few weeks later, 
I stumbled through the front door, exhausted from another long day at work. The sight that greeted me stopped me in my tracks. There, padding around our living room in fluffy pink pajamas, was Linda. What's going on here? I demanded, my voice rising with each word. Tom emerged from the kitchen, a defiant look on his face. I've decided that mom is going to live with us. You're always at work, always away from home. I'm tired of being alone. I couldn't believe what I was hearing. You decided? Without even discussing it with me? When are you ever here to discuss anything? Tom shot back. I turned to Linda, who was watching our exchange with a smug smile. You can't stay here. This is my home. Tom's face darkened. If you're not happy with this arrangement, you can get out. I felt like I'd been slapped. Excuse me? I bought this apartment before we even got married. It's registered in my name. You can't kick me out of my own home. Linda stood up, her face twisted with anger. She took a threatening step towards me. Now listen here, you ungrateful. I held up a hand, stopping her in her tracks. Don't come any closer, Linda. If you lay a hand on me, I'll call the police. Linda's face crumpled. She collapsed onto the sofa, clutching her chest dramatically. Oh, Tom, she wailed. Did you hear that? She threatened to call the police on me. Your own wife, threatening your mother. Oh, how she's hardened, that awful job of hers has turned her into a monster. Tom rushed to his mother's side, shooting me a venomous look. How could you, Tasha, your own mother-in-law? I couldn't take it anymore. Without another word, I stormed off to the guest bedroom, locking the door behind me. I spent a restless night tossing and turning, my mind racing with the absurdity of the situation. The next morning, I was awakened by my phone ringing. It was Mr. Johnson, my boss. Tasha, I need you on a plane today, he said without preamble. We're ready to move forward with the merger. I need you in Chicago ASAP. I've never packed so quickly in my life. As I wheeled my suitcase to the front door, I was met with the stony faces of Tom and Linda. I have to go on a business trip, I said, my voice cold. It's for the merger. I'll be back soon. Tom's lip curled. Don't bother coming back at all. The flight to Chicago was a blur. I threw myself into work, grateful for the distraction. The merger negotiations were intense, requiring all of my focus and energy. But in the quiet moments, when I was alone in my hotel room, the reality of my situation came crashing down. After a grueling week of negotiations and sleepless nights, I finally returned home. As I stood outside my apartment door, suitcases at my feet, I felt a mix of exhaustion and anticipation. I just wanted to collapse into my own bed and forget about the world for a while. I inserted my key into the lock, but it wouldn't turn. Frowning, I tried again. Nothing. A cold feeling of dread washed over me as I realized what must have happened. I knocked on the door, my heart pounding. After a moment, it swung open. There stood Tom and Linda, both wearing casual house clothes, looking at me with a mixture of smugness and disdain. Why doesn't my key work? I asked, my voice barely above a whisper. Tom let out a harsh laugh. I changed the locks, he said, his eyes glinting with malice. You can come in if you're ready to choose your family over your precious career. I stood there, stunned. What are you talking about? Tom reached into his pocket and pulled out a stack of papers. With a flourish, he presented them to me. Divorce papers, he said. It's time to choose, Tasha. Your career, or your home. What's it going to be? I looked at Tom, really looked at him, and in that moment, I realized something profound, I didn't love him anymore. The man I had married was gone, replaced by this bitter, manipulative stranger. Linda's shrill voice cut through my thoughts. Well, we're waiting. Make your choice. I took a deep breath, straightening my spine. I choose my career, I said, my voice steady. Because I don't have a family or a husband. Not anymore. Tom's face twisted with anger, but he thrust a pen at me. 
With a steady hand, I signed the divorce papers right there in the hallway. As soon as I finished, Linda grabbed my arm and roughly pushed me towards the elevator. Good riddance, she spat, slamming the door behind me. I stood there, staring at the closed door of what used to be my home. A laugh bubbled up from my chest, bordering on hysterical. I had just been kicked out of my own apartment, the one I had bought with my hard-earned money. Too tired to make a scene, I gathered my suitcases and made my way to a nearby hotel. A few hours later, I received a call from my friend Rachel, a realtor I had worked with when buying the apartment. Tasha, Han, how are you doing? Rachel asked, concern evident in her voice. I've been better, I admitted. Why do you ask? Rachel hesitated. I've seen Tom's posts on social media. He's, well, he's saying some pretty nasty things about you. My stomach dropped. What kind of things? He's calling you a soulless careerist who destroyed your family for the sake of your job. Says he sacrificed everything for your relationship and you just used him and tossed him aside. He's even talking about suing you for alimony. People are really sympathizing with him, Tasha. I felt a surge of anger. That's not what happened at all. I didn't think so, Rachel said. Want to tell me your side? I gave her a brief rundown of the events of the past week. When I finished, Rachel was quiet for a moment. Oh, Tasha, she finally said. I'm so sorry you're going through this. Listen, I'm going to set the record straight with our friends and colleagues. People need to know the truth. Thanks, Rachel, I said, feeling a lump in my throat. I really appreciate that. As I hung up the phone, I felt a mix of emotions. Anger at Tom's lies, gratitude for Rachel's support, and a growing determination. Tom might have taken my home for now, but I wasn't going to let him take my reputation or my dignity. The vibration of my phone startled me out of my thoughts. Mr. Johnson's name flashed on the screen, and my stomach dropped. I took a deep breath and answered. Tasha, we need to talk, Mr. Johnson said, his voice uncharacteristically serious. I've heard some, concerning things on social media. I closed my eyes, bracing for the worst. Sir, I can explain Dash. No need to explain, Tasha, he interrupted. I want to hear your side of the story. Relief washed over me. I took a deep breath and launched into the whole sordid tale, the arguments, Linda moving in, being locked out of my own apartment, and Tom's social media smear campaign. When I finished, there was a long pause on the other end of the line. Then, to my surprise, Mr. Johnson chuckled. Tasha, do you really think I'd believe that nonsense your ex is spouting, he said. I know you. I've seen your dedication, your work ethic. Don't let this affect your confidence. You have every right to defend yourself, and I want you to know that the company stands behind you. Tears of relief pricked at my eyes. Thank you, sir. You don't know how much that means to me. A couple of days later, my phone pinged with a social media notification. Tom was doing a live broadcast from my apartment. Curious, I tapped on the video. There was Tom, grinning at the camera, surrounded by a film crew. Hey everyone! Exciting news, we're about to start a major renovation on our apartment. The crew from Extreme Makeover, Home Edition, will be here in two weeks to transform this place. I stared at the screen, a plan forming in my mind. Instead of anger, I felt a sense of calm determination. I picked up my phone and dialed Rachel's number. It's Tasha. I need a huge favor, I said the moment she answered. I need you to sell my apartment. Fast. Like, within two weeks fast. Rachel let out a low whistle. That's a tall order, Tasha. What's the rush? I quickly explained about Tom's renovation plans. I need new owners in there before that film crew arrives. But Tasha, how am I supposed to show the apartment? Tom changed the locks, remember? I sent her the most recent photos I had of the place. These will have to do. I know it's not ideal, but… Rachel cut me off with a laugh. Oh, honey, you underestimate me. I've got a couple who've been looking for exactly this kind of place in this area. 
they trust my judgment. With these photos and the reputation of the building, I think I can make this happen. Two weeks flew by in a blur of work and anticipation. Before I knew it, the day of the big renovation reveal had arrived. I sat in my hotel room, laptop open, watching the live stream with bated breath. The camera panned across my former apartment, now filled with an excited film crew and construction workers. Tom and Linda stood in the center, beaming at the cameras. We're so excited to start this renovation, Tom was saying, his arm around Linda's shoulders. It's time for a fresh start, a new chapter in our lives. Just as the host was about to give the signal to start demolition, there was a commotion off camera. The door burst open, and in walked a smartly dressed couple, followed by a familiar face, Rachel. I'm sorry, but you can't renovate this apartment, the man said, holding up a stack of papers. It belongs to us now. The camera swung wildly as confusion erupted. Tom's face went from shock to anger. What are you talking about? This is my home. Rachel stepped forward, her voice calm but firm. Actually, Tom, this apartment belonged to your ex-wife, Tasha. She sold it to this lovely couple two weeks ago. Your signature on the renovation documents is a forgery. The host of the show turned to Tom, his face livid. You forged documents? Do you have any idea how much trouble you've caused? Tom and Linda's faces turned a deep shade of red as the host continued to berate them on live television. The scandal unfolded in real time, with millions of viewers watching as Tom's lies came crashing down around him. I couldn't help but laugh, feeling a mix of vindication and relief. It was over. I had won. With the proceeds from the sale of the apartment, I made a bold move. I bought a charming little house in the city where our company had just completed its merger. It felt poetic, somehow a new home in the city where my career was taking off. To my delight, Mr. Johnson appointed me as the head of our newly acquired company. It was a challenge, but one I was more than ready for. Weeks later, I found myself face to face with Tom again, this time in a courtroom. He had the audacity to demand half of the proceeds from the apartment sale, plus alimony. I watched with satisfaction as the judge denied his claims, citing his attempt to unlawfully seize my property and the forged documents. As we left the courthouse, Tom approached me, his earlier bravado replaced by desperation. Tasha, please, he begged. I'm sorry for everything. Can't we start over? Give our marriage another chance? I looked at him, really looked at him, and felt, nothing. No anger, no sadness, just a profound sense of freedom. I laughed, not unkindly, but with finality. No, Tom, I said, shaking my head. We can't start over. But I can start anew, and that's exactly what I'm doing. As I walked away, I felt lighter than I had in years. My career was soaring, I was leading a successful merger, respected by my peers and superiors alike. I had a beautiful new home, one that was truly mine.